Okay, so in the book of Revelation, we witness the fall and destruction of Babylon in today's reading. And again, as I've been saying like a broken record, we have to decide how we're going to look at this. Uh, mostly why I bring that up today has to do with time. When we started the book of Revelation, we talked about time, like when is this happening? Where is this happening? How? All, all of these questions that come up. And you can read the book of Revelation from front to back as a linear book and go, well, this happens, then this happens, then this, then this, then this, because it's all in order. While many scholars would point out this is probably the order that John saw things in, but that doesn't necessarily mean that's the order in which they will occur, which is completely valid. And to pour some more vegetables into that stew and stir it around, a very generous portion of the scholarship on the book of Revelation uh, identifies the fact that it's cyclical and a lot of confusion arises trying to read it linear because it feels like we're jumping all over the place and it's hard to grasp the flow of time. But if you're reading from a cyclical perspective, you begin to realize that you're reading the same story from different perspectives several times. So we read of the uh, judgment and destruction of Babylon, but Babylon has been a theme that we've been kind of traveling with throughout the book of Revelation. And we've looked at literal views of it, we've looked at historical views of it, we've looked at allegorical views of it, we've looked at futuristic views of it, um, president, pre presentist views of it and have come to realize that we have to we have to at least in part be willing to look figuratively and so Babylon figuratively represents ancient Rome but likely from the perspective of John the writer and the time that John was writing in but more broadly it represents an entire world system of evil that is uh, that is set on total domination and control so that the evil one can make an attempt at establishing sovereignty of some sort, an attempt battle with God. So figuratively, what we read today is the judgment of that entire system. The facade of this world system is exposed. For the facade that it is and its underpinnings are exposed the skeleton is exposed and at the core there is only evil the serpent the evil one has been guiding this all along and in this judgment it is completely exposed and then another angel from heaven calls god's people out come out of babylon my people so that you do not participate in her sins and suffer from any of her plagues. This is patterned after Isaiah's prophecy in the 48th chapter and the 52nd chapter, but also from Jeremiah, where we're told in the 51st chapter, come forth from her midst, my people. And since we're talking figuratively, we're not talking about um, God's people fleeing a city, like literally fleeing from a city to try to hide somewhere else. Rather, this is a call to not participate in the sins that brought, like the evil that brought the whole thing down. Don't participate in any of that. Which doesn't mean don't go to the grocery store, buy uh, groceries, don't buy clothes, like don't participate in the economy. Like that's not what's being said here. This is a spiritual thing. Do not get involved with the darkness. It is being exposed. It is being judged. It is being done away with. Don't find yourself in that camp. And this understanding goes all the way back to the church fathers. And it's been pointed out that this is likely a parallel or a reference to clean and unclean, a concept that's introduced in the Torah and that f follows throughout the entire Bible. So although this isn't um, speaking in reference to physical cleanness and uncleanness by the Torah, this is talking about the same thing spiritually get away from what is unclean don't touch it don't make yourself unclean don't disqualify yourself stay away from it stay away from evil altogether and then judgment comes and it affects everything the great and powerful who had participated with Babylon, who had participated in this darkness, who had grown rich because of it, 
who had found uh, fame and prestige because of it, they're all standing back watching the whole thing fall apart. And they lament because of the implications. It's going to affect them so profoundly. And God's people are invited to rejoice over this. Not in an arrogant or insensitive way, but rather this system of utter evil that had dominated and had done everything conceivable to stamp out the gospel and the witness, the lampstands, from the earth to do away with God's people completely has failed. Evil has been judged and those who have given themselves in worship to evil, who have given themselves over to the, to the dark side, have no power to come against God's people any longer. And that's where we end up today. So, Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the way that it speaks to us, the way that it unsettles us, the way that it stir things, stirs things up within us, the way that it comforts us and directs and guides our steps. It's, it, it touches everything about us. And we thank you for the gift of it. And we invite your Holy Spirit to plant these words deep in our lives. Help us to hold on to the hope that Babylon will fall, that evil will be eradicated from our, uh, our experience ultimately. And help us to stay true and keep the light burning. And Father, part of that is certainly not stirring up anger that produces a fight for no reason. It is sure to happen, just like churning milk or punching a nose. And so we take that to heart as well as we move forward. Help us to remember the proverb that tells us a gentle answer turns away wrath. Come Holy Spirit, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.